Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in XHTML. Today we're going to be talking about image links, comments, and image maps. So, let's start by creating an image tag. And within this, we'll type in our source. Our source attribute. And of course, it'll be the same image I've kept using. I know, I'm pretty boring. I have no new image for you guys every time. Uh, and there it is. So now we want to make it so when you click on this image, you'll go to another website or wherever you want it to go. In order to do this, create anchor tags on either side. Then within your front anchor tag, use the reference attribute href and type in the name of the website that you would like it to go to. I spelled that correctly. Click save, and that should be it. Yep, now it's a link. You can see the website appears down here. And then when you click it, you go to that website. I'm gonna refresh and minimize. Now, I'm gonna digress for a moment and teach you about comments. Now, what comments are, they're just side notes that the programmer or the markup language writer in this case. Uh, would make in kind of helping remember what a piece of code does. This is extremely useful if you have really thick code. And one of your first jobs, or a very common first job for someone that's a computer science major or an IT major, will be a debugger. Someone that has to debug code, find logical errors and whatnot which could be a real pain in the rear, rear end, especially when the piece of code they give you is like a couple hundred pages long. I mean, it, 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 it's mind-boggling. It's like, this is a lot of code. Well, where, where do I even begin? And it's a lot easier when there are comments separating each bit of chunk of code, kind of like paragraphs in when you're writing an essay, that kind of tell whoever's reading it what this piece of code does. So in order to create a comment in XHTML, use the less than sign, exclamation point, two dashes, then in order to close it, two dashes and then a greater than sign. Then in between these, you can write down your comment like this. This is an image link. Oops. And that just tells us what this piece of code is. And of course, when it's really thick code, you might have it between your pieces of code. So it might be you might have it down here before your next. But since this is so small, I'm just going to have it next to it. Now, image map. Now let's get right into this example. I have this picture right here called shapes. Let me open it up. Now I have these three shapes. And I want to make it so if I click on this rectangle, I'll go to one website. If I click on this circle, I'll go to another. Or I click on this triangle, and now I'll go to a third place. Now, a common place that you might have seen image maps is in the form of, or it's in more like an illusion of a navigation bar, but it's not really a navigation bar. And a, an example of this is if you see this big rectangle that's divided up, and in one little cell, it'll say home page and then the next one will say about and then something else in the third box and it's not really a navigation bar like if you right click it you'll see that it might say view image it doesn't here but but it's just one big picture and when you click on each part of that what looks like a navigation bar you'll go somewhere else and that's really the sole purpose of this and I'm going to teach you the three different ways you can use image maps the three different shapes that's a rectangle a circle and any other type of polygon. So first, we're going to have to make our image appear on the website. So I believe it's called shapes.ping is my picture. Let's make sure it pops up. Oh, and there it is. Now, we're going to have to create our image map. So it's open map tag and a closing map tag. And one of the most important things that you'll have to do is figure out how 
will this map know what image it's using so we're gonna have to create a name for this and I'm just gonna call it shapes and you also have to create an ID I'm not gonna go into great detail on what IDs are they're not anything you really have to worry about until you learn CSS cascading style sheets and whatnot but in this example I'm just gonna name it the same thing it really doesn't matter then in the image tag you're gonna have to create a new attribute called use map equals and you're gonna have to type the name of the map tags or, or which map tags you might have multiple map tags the name of the one that you want to use so you're gonna type a pound sign first then the name of the map tags now within these let's do our first shape so what was our first shape let's let's do a rectangle first so I type in area close it then for shape for a rectangle type in rect then for what website you want to for each reference I'm just gonna use Google again I'll use different websites for the others don't worry and then an alternate name which I'll always have the same no matter what image it is I'll just call it shapes why not then we're gonna have to figure out the coordinates where to start and where to end in pixels so for this for rectangles you have to figure out the upper left and the lower right in order to do this what I usually do is I'll open this in paint then if you look down here you should see the X and Y coordinates for the pixels of wherever your cursor is on the image so if I go up here I see a 4757 then if I go down here and I'm, yeah, I am writing these down too 316 158 so let's plug these guys in so within our coordinates attribute, I'll type in 47, 57, 316, and 158. Then when I save, press F5. Well, see how it's a link now? But only in here, and you'll see Google appears there. Now for circle, you have to find the center use the same X coordinate and figure out the radius so I'm just gonna copy all of this then paste it then I'm gonna type in circle now going back nope, that's not paint back to paint the center of this circle is about I would say it's about the center 501-151 now go across here make sure it's still uh, 151 which it is but now it's 587 see how the Y quarter is still 151 but the X is now 587 what you want to do is take that original X quarter the 501 and uh, subtract that from the 587 so I'm doing the math right now and I get 86. So now, what I'm going to do for this is type in 501 for the original X, 151, and then the radius. And the radius here was 86 pixels. And I'll change this to Yahoo. Then when I save this, now if you look down there, you now see Yahoo. You click it, you go to Yahoo, and if you're here, I want to open that. What was that? Oh, freaking sick! This is like, oh my god. Okay, I have to look at that later. Now the last one is, and I'm really running out of time, are polygons. What you do here is you start anywhere and just type the X and Ys xy here xy here and xy here for whatever shape it is hopefully it's a linear though if you're dealing with curves that's yeah, gonna be a little bit more 
interesting in order to figure out. So going back into paint, I would start with this one. This, there we go. And I have 204 by 368. And then I have 300, 217. And then 396, 367. Oh, this is going to be big. Whoops. Now, first, I'm going to copy this whole thing again. Copy. Paste. Then for a polygon, just type in poly. Now, for the coordinates, whoops. I'm going to type in 204, 368, 300, 217. 396, 367. That's my three pairs of coordinates. And I'll change this to YouTube. Um, why not? You know what? I'm going to change it to, to Facebook. I'm a fan of Machinima, and I want to make sure nothing inappropriate appears in my tutorials. And there it is. Now it's, now it's Facebook, and I'm going to click that and you go right to Facebook and there you have it I'm gonna cut this video now because it's gone pretty long